and uh, clearly just as the rain season is upon us, the political season is also inching close and other etc. from Plains constituency requires much more to develop its water and roads which remain a priority to the constituents. Today on Constituency Link, we um, go to that particular constituency which is the Setra from Plains to bring you what they want and how their constituency, um, their constituents are ensuring that members of parliament aspirants can meet those needs. Welcome to Constituency Link, and today we are focusing on the Central Town Constituency. Now, this constituency, like all constituencies in the Volta region, has known no political party apart from the ruling NDC. After 12 years of serving the people of this constituency, residents decided to part way with incumbent MP and former Roads and Highways Minister Joe Gidisu. But how vibrant are the other political parties in this constituency? And what are the issues that residents will be looking for, out for to vote for the next candidate to lead them in parliament? Central Tong was carved out of Old North Tong constituency in 2004. With that, Joe Kwashigidisu of the National Democratic Congress, NDC, became the member of parliament for the area. In this part of the country, the only means of changing members of parliament is through primaries. The NDC's dominance has been strong in the constituency since 1992. Taking over from Austin Ikufugame, who headed Old North Tong, Joe Gidisu represented Central Tong, the constituency for the past 12 years. After over a decade, the former Minister of Roads and Highways, Joe Gidisu, was floored by Deputy Director of Human Resource at the Ministry of Health. The Setra Farm Plains District is one of the 46 districts created in 2012 through Legislative Instruments LI-2114. It was carved from the erstwhile Setra Farm Plains District with Robonso as the district capital and was inaugurated on 28th June 2012. It covers an estimated land area of 2,000 450.39 square kilometers, making it the largest in terms of land area in the region. It shares common boundaries with Setra Kumau to the south and Setra Central to the west. It also shares boundaries with Kou Afram Plains North District in the eastern region to the east and the Atebubwa Mountain and Sene East Districts in the Bunahafu region to the north. It also shares boundaries with Sene West in the Bunahafu region to the west. The projected population of the district is around 40,125. The entire population is rural and youthful. It is sparsely populated, a feature which is adversely affecting the effective placement of development infrastructure about 2.1% of the district's total population has one form of disability or the other. The types of disability in the district include sight, hearing, speech, physical, intellect and emotion. Agriculture constitutes the main economic activity in the district, employing 89.9% of the labor force. Notable agricultural products are plantain, cassava, maize, granites and ochre.
The three regions of the north alone constitute 84.3% of the migrant population in the district. The culture of the people in the district could be viewed from different dimensions. The population is heterogeneous with the Kans forming the dominant ethnic group followed by the Moli Dabon ethnic group. Despite this unique feature, the common dialect spoken is the Asante tree, though some migrants still stick to speaking their mother tongue. Fufu is the staple food that is usually consumed in the district in spite of the presence of a number of people from northern region. Over the years, even when the district was still part of the Setra East district with Kumewu as their district capital, the people always voted for the NDC. And in 2012, when the district was made independent and the constituency on its own, the electorate still gave their power to the NDC with over 68%. But some years on, things have changed. The people seem to be yearning for more development in terms of education, electricity, water and health, but how are these things going to influence their decisions to vote for a particular party? Abai Mahama Wadada President Mahama has disappointed us. There are no jobs, yet they claim they have created jobs. As far as I'm concerned, there has been enough development. We now have lights, boreholes and good schools. I will therefore vote for him to continue. The hardship is too much for me me to bear, so I won't vote for him. The district has 10 electoral areas and has one constituency also called Citra Franklin. The only election held since the creation of the district in 2012 was won by the NTC in both presidential and parliamentary elections. President John Germani Mahama won by a very huge margin with 6,203 votes representing 69.83%, while the NPP candidate Nanado Danko Kufuado had 2,514 votes, representing 28.30%, with the rest of the candidates carrying less than 1%. The parliamentary elections had only NDC and NPP as political parties, with the rest being independent candidates. The incumbent, Alex Adoma Comensa, who stood on the ticket of the NDC, won by 63.25% with 5,701 votes. The NPP candidate, Bright Owusu, had 1,882 votes, representing 20.88%. The closest contender was Samuel Kwame Amponsa, an independent candidate, with 1,131 votes, representing 12.55%. Jambedu Iliasu Bansuma, also independent, had 2.32%, 2 with 209 votes, while Mohamed Mumin Amponsa had 89 votes, representing 0.99%. Though a new district, a lot is being done to upgrade the status. The district has a market and town roads are also being constructed. The district has a police station, a courthouse and police quarters are currently under construction. It has a new ICT center which is yet to be commissioned and work on the new district assembly complex is steadily in progress. The district capital Jogonso is accessible by road while some of the big communities are inaccessible. They include Dewia. Fumsua, Isakrom and Anofi. This is due to the deplorable nature of roads leading to these communities.
The state of our roads will influence my decision. We feel neglected if this road is not constructed. No one should even dare to bring a ballot box here because we will not vote. Described by experts as the most deprived district in the region, the district lacks basic amenities of life Portable water, electricity, accessible roads, district hospital, senior high school, decent housing units, and telecommunication connectivity. The socio-economic development of any district is largely dependent on the quality of its educational delivery. The entire district has 37 kindergartens, 37 primary schools, 15 junior high schools, and a vocational school. This is woefully inadequate considering the growing population of the district. School dropout is high and teenage pregnancy on the rise. Women in the constituency are also engaged in farming and small-scale production of oil palm. But accessing credit facilities remain an affront to the success of their enterprises. Though school and other infrastructure exist, the sparse nature of the settlement poses a huge challenge. Residents travel sometimes as far as 15 kilometers or more to attend school and back every day. Students therefore get to class tired and end up sleeping in class, a situation teachers say is having an adverse impact on effective teaching and learning. That is a, a major problem we are facing here. But instead of us to start classes as, let's say, 8, 15, we, sometimes we have to wait for them to come because you can't start when two or three are in a class. So we have, we have to wait for them to come. Before so normally classes is We apologize for all the break in that story, but certainly we will be bringing it to you um, so, uh, because especially we are also in the election season. So stay with us. Uh, we want to say a big thank you to Star Ghana for sponsoring the constituency link. And as I keep saying, stay with TV3. Your constituency might be next.